Amen today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And today is another day that the Lord has made and he said we should, be, we should rejoice and be glad in it. And I hope you are enjoying the convention. And I know that um, each day uh, the, 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 the miracles will be greater and the blessings are mightier. So if you have not connected, please connect. God bless you. Today we'll be continuing with, we will continue with the letter to the churches. And we are looking at the letter to the church in Thyatira. Letter to the church in Thyatira. And this will go into the Bible reading, which is found in Revelation chapter 2, 18 to 29. Revelation chapter 2, 18 to 29. And unto the angel of the church in Tatira write, This thing said the Son of God, who art his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet as are like fine brass. I know thy work and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servant to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her in great adultery with her in great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the rain and the heart, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depth of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as a vessel of a porter, shall they be broken to Shiva, even as I receive of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. I pray that your ears, my ears, will be open to all that the Lord is teaching us this season, and we will be able to amend our ways. Let's look at the memory verse, Revelation 2.20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servant, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idol. And I just, I observed two things here that the Lord hates passionately. To the letter of the church in Pagamos, and the Lord mentioned two things, fornication, and things offered to idol. The Lord detests them passionately. Uh, and the Lord is repeating the same thing to the church in Tartira. 
fornication and eating food offered to idols, idolatry. God detests them. Let's go to the uh, opening. Tiatira was a great commercial city with many trade unions. Our only members of this association were also we are, we are allowed to sell their goods there. However, this union occasionally held feasts in the temple of idol and engaged in gross immorality. For members of the church to trade, they have to join the union, thereby partaking in idol worship and immorality. This was a big problem, and there was a woman in the church who capitalized on it to lure them into sin. She called herself a prophetess. So many of them believed whatever she said. What she had against, believed whatever uh, she said. Sorry for that. What Jesus had against the church in Tiatira, however, was that they kept giving this woman their platform to preach. And as we see in our memory verse today. Now, Teatira, as we read, was a big commercial city, just like many commercial cities these days. And as a commercial city business thrive, you have different organizations, trade unions, which is also what is happening today in major cities. But in these associations, they do have functions they have meetings, they have groups, they have uh, where people gather together to make decisions. And then also because the, 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 the Tiatira uh, 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 business people, uh, some of them were idolaters and they had to perform rituals and offer sacrifice unto idols and then eat out of the sacrifice. So for you to be part of that meeting or to feel belong, let me use the feel belong because that's what many Christians do. You want to feel belong. Christians find themselves eating food offered to idols and also committing fornication and everything that are abominable in that gathering. Many of the Christian join them. That was not even enough. There was a prominent woman in the church in Tyatira who happens to be wealthy, business person, and she calls herself prophetess. Because Jesus identified her. Jesus did not anoint her. That's one thing you need to know. Jesus did not call her. Jesus did not anoint her. Jesus said she called herself prophetess. And these days, you see, many people who call themselves prophets, prophetess, pastors, but they have not been called by the Lord. And they are teaching in churches. But Jesus was saying that this woman called herself a prophetess, and the church allowed her to teach in the church. She does not only teach, but she seduces brethren into fornication. She takes them to that club, to that gathering where people eat food offered to idol and commit immorality. And Jesus said, for allowing this woman to operate in the church is an abomination, is against it. And this we see today. You see, today, many Christians profess to be born again, but because you want to feel belong, you want a bigger job, you want a business to grow, you have joined the group, and you have committed fornication. You see, many Christians, because they needed money, uh, they wanted their business to blossom, they commit fornication with business women, with professional colleagues, with colleagues in the office, married women, with single men, single men, uh, married men with single women, vice versa. 
Just because you want to belong, because of what you need, because of survival, you have engaged in immorality and taking food offered to idol. This is time to repent. Then Jesus was not happy because a member of the church was allowed to operate. Let's read further. These people knew that she was seducing God's people into fornication and idolatry. Yet they kept allowing her to teach. You must be very careful who you allow to step on the podium in your assembly so that Jesus will not say, uh, sorry, let me repeat that. You must be very careful who you allow to step on the podium in your assembly so that Jesus will not say he is disappointed in you. Clearly, for this woman must have been rich and influencer, influential. You must never allow children of the devil to teach the children of God, no matter how big their contribution to the church projects are. Some subtle Jezebel are allowed on the altar these days. When the church brings a professional who is not a true Christian to the altar to teach the people, they, are invite, they, have, they have invited Jezebel. The, the fellow is not going to teach scriptural principle, but he or she, because he or she does not live by them. Such person will teach the principle they live by, which are those of the world. Once you put someone in front of the children of God to teach them, somehow you have told the people this, that this is a role model worthy enough to listen to you, listen to and follow. Before we go into the last part, sometimes we have programs in the church, uh, educative programs. We want to look at programs that we encourage professionals in the church, encourage the teenagers, encourage the young adults, encourage the children, encourage the church. There are topical issues we want to look at. We want to look at subjects. It could be in medical area. It could be in business area. It could be, they are not bad. But what is bad and what is worst is if you bring a professional in that field that is not a child of God. And that's what Jesus was saying, that this woman was allowed to teach, whereas she's not a child of God. She's not known by the Lord, number one. Number two, she professed to be a prophet, whereas she is not a prophet. And that's why we need to be careful about who we invite to the altar. Any subject we want to teach in the church, let's investigate. Find out about this person we are inviting, whether professional, whether a pastor or a professed pastor, somebody that professes to be a pastor. Let's look at their, 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 them and be sure they are truly children of God. Most especially, let's pray about it and allow the Spirit of God to lead us. But Jesus is saying that she taught the doctrine and misled people and into eating food offered to idol and into fornication. And this is happening. Many children of God have been lured into occultism through pastors who are not true child of God, through prophets who are not true child of God. Many children have been lured into occultism through professionals who are not children of God because they were invited to church and people relied on the, the church leadership and what they are presented as, oh, this person is a role model. We need to be careful. 
These days, even we have comedians invited to the altar. I think that's what Jesus is saying here. Inviting a comedian into the altar. And then they talk about sacred topics and make fun of it. What they cannot do in other platform or on to other religion, topical issues. They, they just come and discuss topical issues about the, the, the gospel and say whatever they like. And we laugh about it. And we listen to it. And we see nothing wrong about it. We are being warned. Jesus is warning us today. We should watch those we, we, who we invite to the altar to teach his church. Is not our church. His church. It does not matter what the word says because the word will always condemn the step that the body of Christ take. The word will always say things about the body of Christ. I, I wonder why. They don't condemn any other religion, but they will always say things about the step that the church takes, say things against it. We have to, it's the church. The, the church is the body of Christ. The church belongs to Jesus. And Jesus is saying we should watch because there's punishment. We will see later. Finally, whatever field it is that you want your people to learn how to be successful in, find a Christian who has been successful in that area and invite him or her. If you don't know any Christian who has been successful in that field, groom your people to attain success by yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit. Don't invite Jezebel. Jezebel does not necessarily mean a woman. It can be a man or a, a woman. It's, Jezebel simply means someone who is not a child of God, who profess to be a minister or a teacher of the world. Whereas he or she is a fake. We should not invite them to teach the people of God. The Lord is warning us. I pray God will help us. I pray God will give us wisdom. And if you are there, you are professing to be a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, but you are not born again. You are not saved. The Lord does not know you. you know, one thing about it is that the Lord knows those who are his. Even the church does not know. The church knew in this case that she was doing the wrong thing, but they did not correct her. But even when the church don't know, Jesus knows who you are. Maybe you are able to, you know, people can hide these days. You can hide yourself. People don't see you. But Jesus knows those who are his. Please repent. Because in tomorrow's lesson, you will see the punishment that is coming upon Jezebel. I pray we will not be partakers of other people's sin. And if you are not born again, repent today. Give your life to Jesus. Accept him as his Lord and personal Savior. As your Lord and personal Savior. And God will continue to bless you and be with you in Jesus' name. Go through the hymn prayerfully and pray to God. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for this lesson. You have been helping us. You have been teaching us. You have been warning us because you love us. Father, help us as ministers. Help us as pastors. Help us as workers. Help us as your children to listen to what you are saying and to do what you are saying in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. See you tomorrow as we continue with the letter to the church in Tartira. God bless you.